That's a great question and it's a very like hands-on practical question because how do you fit these, these types of things in? Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. It, it depends on what you're trying to achieve really, yeah. right? Because if, if, if see, there, there's one thing, th there's one interesting thing is, is, is that if the human being, especially in training and what I've seen from, from spending um, years in this industry is that people rarely do what they need, rather they do what they want to, yeah. right? Um, so, and usually we gravitate towards the things that we're already kind of good at, right? So we, that makes us want to do the things that we're already good at and that is very rarely the thing that we actually need. So many people will gravitate towards lifting a lot of weight because they're, they like it and they're good at it naturally, right? And those are probably the people that needs to train their cardiovascular system the most. So now it becomes a, now it becomes a question of, of what do you decide to do, right? Because we, uh, we can easily say what you need to do from a health perspective. For such a person who's never done any cardiovascular training, I would definitely say you should, foc uh, you should focus on some cardiovascular training, right? Um, just to balance things out. But then again, the person might make a, a cognitive decision saying that actually I don't want to do that because I want to compete in powerlifting. And then there's really nothing we can do about it, right? Because then, then that's, uh, th that's the freedom that it, the individual has to say, okay, I'm, I'm choosing not to do that. It may not be the best thing for your health, but I'm choosing to do that. So, so, so now we're faced with a totally different predicament and we're, we're faced with if, 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 if we're a coach and we're also trying to look out for our client's health and all that. So, but now it becomes a, a different type of question because it's, it's kind of easy to say what you should do but it, it very rarely, it, um, uh, what the person wants to do is probably something different. Um, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday is that even uh, if we have no idea about the genetics, uh, what the person that we're talking to or if it's ourselves, we, if we don't know about genetics and we don't know about the structure of the heart, if we haven't had a Doppler ultrasound done on our heart and actually measure these things, then we actually don't know what the status or the current condition of the heart is. So in that regard, if we don't know that, but otherwise we're fine, then a distribution of 50-50 time-wise spent seems to be recommendable. And like I said yesterday, I, s I told you guys that there's actually no literature to show, uh, to show this. This came about because me asking, um, uh, me asking um, pretty famous anesthesiologist and researcher back in Denmark, Dr. Niels Secker, um, the guy who spent 50 years in, in research and has like, I think like 800 published papers on the heart and the circulatory system and stuff like that. And he's also a two-time uh, Olympic rower from the 50s. Um, and I asked him about this and he said, without knowing any of these parameters, the best thing you can do is at least a 50-50 distribution, right? At least. So, and since there are no other guidelines to follow, that's kind of the guideline that, uh, that I'm choosing to, to use as my reply to those kind of things, those kind of questions. Um, now, then the question comes up, if you decide to do a 50-50, equal amount of time spent doing cardiovascular training, equal amount of time spent doing, uh, doing lifting, then when do you do which part, right? And that can be done in so many different ways. See, the thing is, we just have to remember is that, let's say you want to do both in one training session. If you do your strength training first, then you will use most of your energy and your glycogen stores, your, uh, the, 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 the storage that we have of sugar in our muscles and in our liver, that's going to go to fueling the weightlifting part, which means that you're not going to have much left uh, to do your cardiovascular training. So the cardiovascular training intensity will suffer. And there is ample evidence to show that, that if you don't have all day to train, then higher intensity seems to work better if you want to make quick improvements in your cardiovascular system and in your function. But you have to have be on the higher end on, on the intensity scale. And if you already used up all your energy doing heavy lifting, 
then you're not going to be able to reach that intensity level or for do, do it as, as long as you need to before, you are, uh, before you're tired and want to stop. So then there's that problem. And the other way, th that's, it's the same issue, right? Because you go in and do your cardiovascular training and then you use up most of your glycogen stores and you are fatigued and all of these things and then you need to go lift then we have the same problem with intensity there. So either intensity will suffer or movement velocity will suffer when you go lift. So your strength training or your musculoskeletal training, that's going to be compromised. So then it's going to be a judgment call. Are you comfortable with that, knowing that? Then you can quite easily do that. You just have to know that's the response that it takes, right? And even if you space it out, uh, and you have maybe eight hours in between, you're in a situation where you can have two workout sessions in one day. Even then, eight hours is probably not enough to recover fully, right? I especially if intensity is high, um, volume is high, density is high in your training, in your weight training, and so forth. So many people choose to alternate if they want to do both. So one day we do one, the, uh, the next day we do the other and then go back and forth and you end up having maybe three workout sessions of each every week if you train pretty much every day. Mm -hmm.